Could it be that the single largest federal bailout in history was procured by fraud, fraud in which the feds themselves participated and the government actually counseled in favor of criminal behavior? Only in America. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of America's great defenders of freedom today. Congressman Ron Paul joins us from our nation's capital. Congressman, a belated Happy New Year and welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you. Should Tim Geithner be fired, whether he knew or even if he didn't know what lawyers in his name were telling lawyers at AIG to do in a $185 billion deal? Yeah, I, I think he's earned that. I think anybody who's trying to act responsibly and have a clean slate, he would have to go. Uh, you imply that probably fraud was involved in this operation. But uh, I think that's a narrow definition of fraud and the broad definition of fraud, the whole process, the way the whole system, the whole system of money is fraud. You know, it's a cartel with fiat money and they're always taking care of their friends. But, you know, uh, I put out a little release after this happened. I didn't concentrate on Geithner. And I think he is important. And even if he didn't know anything about it, it, to me, it seems like he's irresponsible. He should have known something about it. But my point that I made was this makes the issue of transparency of the Fed very, very important. And then they yell and scream that we're not supposed to know. So as bad as the Fed is and what they've done, you know, I blame the Congress still the most because it's we here in the Congress that have the responsibility. The Congress in the past have created this system. And now even this generalized concept of fraud turns into a narrow system of fraud. And the Congress, you know, they're going to tinker and yell and scream and all. But uh, Congress, Congress has a lot of responsibility for the mess that we're in today. You know, I thought of you yesterday, Congressman Paul, when we first learned of this story. And I thought to myself, my goodness, here's another argument in favor of auditing the Fed. Think of the attitude on the part of these Fed lawyers. Let's see. The present, we're talking about September 08, the present Secretary of the Treasury is the former chair of Goldman Sachs. You guys are going to take the money we're giving to you and you're going to pay Goldman Sachs 100 cents on the dollar and you're not going to pay anybody else 100 cents on the dollar. Maybe we shouldn't put that in writing. Think of the problems that come about when the government breaks its own laws. Uh, Judge, do you think this could qualify as the big lie? It's so preposterous, nobody would believe this is conceivable, that they would allow this to happen. But this is a big lie. You know, when, when you think of what we do and reward uh, Goldman Sachs and all the banks, and they're still back in business, they're making a lot of money, and we're still guaranteeing this money to them, you know, through FDIC and other assurance programs and that, uh, that's available. So we haven't really done anything yet. And this uh, commission that's in operation, Don, here uh, right now uh, to investigate. Uh, that is another, another commission that won't accomplish anything. They do not have one free market economist that is on the commission. They probably won't have anybody testify from an Austrian free market viewpoint. And they're going to find the answer to this. The very economists who predicted this mess and know what was going on, and, ex ex you know, they understand it, but they're not going to touch this. They're going to talk about tinkering around with regulations. If we have a few more regulations that will, you know, like Sarbanes-Oxley and chase good companies overseas, that's, that's the only thing that's likely to happen because they're not even talking about the real problem, the fraud in the monetary system. Yeah, Congressman Paul, just think of what we've learned since TARP. Remember when Henry Paulson and Ben Bernanke went rushing into President Bush with some notes written on almost literally really on the back of a, a napkin saying you got to get us this 800 billion or the sky is going to fall. We now know that there was likely fraud in the AIG deal. We know they didn't even spend the TARP money on what they were going to spend it on. We know that the banks that they bailed out have all paid it back. We know that those banks have become wealthier with federal dollars. We know that some of the banks didn't want, didn't need, couldn't use and tried to resist the federal money. And there are people in the Congress who are still saying that the Fed has the right to keep its behavior secret from the rest of us. Can they even, with a straight face, make that argument anymore? Well, they'll try to, and, you know, people seem to gobble it up. But when you think about the leadership of both parties and this, remember when the vote came up on that, our two candidates, Republicans and Democrats, they rushed back and they both voted for this. So, you know, the, the whole system... Uh, whether it's the Federal Reserve System and the excessive spending, there's a little bit of talk, but no, no real action. So it's a shame. This is why 
I'm pessimistic on the short run, believing that nothing is going to be changed out here. The deficits and the spending will not come under control, but hopefully our message of freedom and liberty and sound money will get out because it's growing by leaps and bounds, that we can at least offer the answer when we have a currency crisis. And that's going to be the most important thing, that when we have to rebuild this system, we rebuild it with some common sense rather than this fraudulent system that just encourages the benefits to all these special interests. Well, one of the most uh, important pieces of legislation to uh, Freedom Watch viewers is yours to audit the Fed. What, what is your feeling, optimistic or pessimistic, that at some time in 2010, in some form, it will reach the president's desk? What do you think? Well, if it reaches his desk in some form, it'll probably be watered down a good bit. To have it reach his desk the way it is now, I believe it's such an important issue to the, uh, to the leaders of the country, the president, and uh, you know, Wall Street and others, I think it would be stopped because they're not going to allow this to happen. There's too many things. I mean, we're just, this is the tip of the iceberg, this uh, Goldman Sachs deal. I imagine there are hundreds of deals like this and they've been going on for 30 years or more. You know, you know uh, so there's so much buried in there and they're not likely to let this happen. That's like finding out every single thing the CIA has ever done over the last 30 years. And Earlier uh, this week, either. there was an argument in federal court here in New York City uh, in which uh, Fox uh, Business Network sued the Federal Reserve under the Freedom of Information right. Act to get a copy of all the documents in TARP. And I went to the oral argument. Uh, there were a number of people involved that uh, were friends and colleagues of mine. And the government actually argued that if we reveal today in 2010 the nature of the TARP documents that we saw and dealt with in 2008, it would harm the banks. Harm the banks? The money's already <laughs> been paid back. The banks have made a fortune. The banks are paying themselves billions in profits and in bonuses. What kind of an argument is that? Bottom line, Congressman Paul, I think Fox is going to win. I think the Second Circuit Court of Appeals is going to grant that Freedom of Information Act request. It'll go all the way to the Supreme Court, but I think we win this round, and that will help your audit the Fed bill to yes. pass. But this is a good example of the citizens uh, acting uh, any way they can because they can't wait on Congress. I've been working at this for a long time, and we are making inroads, but because of these suits and what Fox has done, this has been very beneficial. So uh, everybody has to get together, but because of the attention that Fox got from this lawsuit, I think has helped us a whole lot. There's a lot it's a lot more difficult uh, for anybody in the Congress to vote against. I think if there's an up and down vote in the Senate, they'll do what they did in the House. They're going to vote for this. And uh, I, I hope that happens. Uh, I hope I'm not too pessimistic. There is a chance that would happen. I think what might happen is if they allow it to go through, they'll depend on the courts to protect them. Right. You know, the courts, and you know this history rather well, the courts have not been good at protecting, uh, you know, sound money, and they've always protected uh, the monopoly of the Federal Reserve and central banking. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right, but I'm glad about. Uh, I'm glad to hear your optimism in this brand new uh, year that we're in right now. Before I let you go, the president announced this morning, not directly, but through somebody else, he's going to ask for another forty billion dollars uh, to pay for the troops uh, in Afghanistan. Where is the outrage on the left of his own party? to A, the concept of an unlawful war, and B, funding the war like George W. Bush did on a credit card. <laughs> And then they wonder why uh, there might be some pressure coming on our dollar. We're already under pressure, but it's going to get a lot worse. Uh, you, you know, you just can't, can't imagine uh, wh where their thinking is. I mean, I, I'm always baffled by that. But they do it with a straight face, as you say. They just come back and say, well, this is $30, $40 billion. Uh, you know, what's the difference? We're already a trillion dollars in deficit this year, so a little bit more won't hurt. But they always will qualify and say, we'll worry about the deficit later on. Or we'll worry about inflation later on. But right now, there's a crisis, and we have to act, or the world will come to an end. Of course, we're in a financial crisis because we've been acting this way all along. One more uh, a question about abortion, uh, Congressman Paul. Uh, Congressman Bart Stupak, the pro-life Democrat who leads a large group of pro-life Democrats in the House, uh, insisting on language in the federal health care legislation that would prohibit the government from directly or indirectly paying for abortion, said that if the Senate version comes to the House, the pro-life Democrats will vote against it. Do you think that's so? Do you think the issue of abortion, of all things, could possibly save us 
from the socialization of medicine in this country? Wouldn't that be a wonderful irony for today, you know, that that issue was able to wake some people up. So people would be voting our way for different reasons, but for a very important reason. And that's a possibility. I, I think when push comes to shove, he won't be able to hold all those votes. The question is, is, I think he needs at least 40, but he had about 60 before. So he will have to keep a bunch of Democrats, uh, you know, with him. And that's an interesting phenomenon. So uh, it, it, may, it may just turn out that uh, the right to life issue gave us a uh, right to maybe our free market uh, medicine, medical care, at least move us in that direction or away from socializing our medical care. So nicely put. Congressman Ron Paul, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Thank Watch. You.